Good. How are you? Good. Six six. Is that right? Yep. What did your basketball coach say when you got done there? So my dad played basketball in high school. He played Division One at Eastern Washington, and I played up until eighth grade. And I had to make a decision between uh, basketball and football because I was a baseball guy all day. But so I chose football eighth grade. I started playing receiver and then quarterback in high school. You played baseball too. Yeah. Did you skip that season? Too? Yeah, that was. I mean, it was a tough decision. Obviously, like all my friends were on the team. It was we won league championship last year, but it was a no-brainer at the end of the day. Ty, what, what precipitated the move from receiver to quarterback? So, during the COVID year, I was sleeping a lot, growing, and we got a new head coach <laughs> after uh, my freshman year, and he kind of just, he saw me throw a ball back when we were running routes, and he said, hey, come here, come, come try this, take a three-step drop, and then from that day on, I've just been putting in 100% effort towards it, and ended up winning the starting job, and then so were either, you from either watching Pitt last year or getting to know Coach Signetti now, what what is like your favorite thing about not just himself but also the offense that he has going on here? Coach Signetti, he's a he's a great guy. I mean, he knows exactly what he's talking about and he's a great teacher. All that experience he's had in the league, other colleges, but the first thing I noticed about Coach Signetti was how like his hospitality. Like when he when Coach Davis hit me up about like Hop on the phone and everything. I talked to Coach Signetti, and it was just felt like family from day one. So when when you say you switched from receiver to quarterback, did you play quarterback at all growing up? Mm -hmm. So you never, you, not even like Pop Warner. Mm -hmm. I played uh, receiver and kicker in eighth grade freshman year, and then yeah, quarterback sophomore, junior, senior year. So you've been a quarterback for three years. I mean, t take me through just learning that position. I mean, physically is one thing, but yeah. learning how to read a defense. In that short amount of time, I mean, how, how did you go about taking on that challenge? It was definitely very tough at first because I was 15 years old on varsity playing against 17, 18 year olds. So there's one specific practice where we were, we were working a QB run, and me and my OC were kept arguing about like hitting the hole. And I was like, Coach, I got to go outside. He's like, Just go inside. So I went inside, and it, I mean, it worked. He was right. So I kind of just Met with him a lot, my head coach, and just we just worked very hard with it. With with so little experience at that position, just having played for three years, how valuable is it to have a guy like Phil, you know, who's, who's played four years at the collegiate level, and even someone like Christian, who's yeah. who's played two years at Penn State. I mean, how with that experience, how valuable is that to learn under guys like that? It's it's great. I mean, Phil, Christian, and Nate, they they all know their stuff. They're great quarterbacks, great leaders, and it's just honestly, it's just. Great to be able to learn from them. I should have asked this question to the other guys, but what was your first impression? I'll put you on the spot. What was your first impression of uh, Pat Narduzzi, your first face-to-face -face meeting? He, again, just like Coach Ignati, he just felt it felt like home with him. When he came out to visit me, um, we played horse, and he said that he beat me. He did not beat me in horse. <laughs> he, I don't know if you saw that, but he said that he beat me. He did not beat me, but <laughs> he's, I, I mean, he's a great coach, and it's just, it's awesome. I mean, He's just a great guy. Better, better uh, coach than a basketball player, I guess. He's got, he's got a nice jumper. Really? Yeah. How, how bad did you beat him? It was like, I think it was forced to H O R S E or S. Forced to H O R S. <laughs> but it was close. Yeah, it was close. What's his go to shot? Uh, I can't really remember, but he was it. <laughs> definitely short range. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, what, what I feel like in, in, in California, you know, quarterbacks who emerge. schools in the area and I just I was like no thank you I never even thought about it because my guys are been with them my whole life growing up my little brother was going to start on varsity that year and I'm like nope I'm going to stay home Pat how much was was Frank's experience with other quarterbacks the NFL quarterbacks appealing to you as you, you continue to learn the position it's I mean he's got all these old tapes of Eli Manning Aaron Rodgers Joe Namath so it's like we're in the meeting and we're just watching all those tapes and it's just great to see how I'm going to be learning the same stuff that those great quarterbacks are learning too. 
what are a couple of things you've already picked up on? Well, I would, we never went under center in high school. So I've been working the drop with Coach Dibbs, seven step, five step, outside zone, all that stuff. Just, I mean, it, it's, it's been a, it's been good, but it's set for something new for me. As, as a former receiver, how does that help you identify or understand or even like, hey, I play that position. Yeah. I, I know. I kind of understand like what kind of what, what kind of balls they like like receivers like to catch, like where they want it on like a dig, where they want it on a fade, stuff like that. Anything else for Todd? He didn't tell you he coached your name, did he? <laughs> <laughs> who's the who's NFL quarterback that you try to model your game after? Definitely Justin Herbert. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a Chargers fan. Okay. No. You're allowed to be. It's all right. No. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, what team do you root for? Seahawks. Okay. Yeah, my dad grew up in Seattle, so it's just been Hawks. Right. Hey, you would think it's 660, probably a guy that's fixing the pocket, but are you mobile? Like, how much do you, do you get outside? Uh, I try to stay in the pocket, you know, but when I need to go make a play, I'll definitely get out of the pocket and make a play. By all your other three offers were from the West Coast team. What was the deciding factor that prompted you to make this move across the country? Um, or how difficult has it been, maybe, or easy has it been for you to be so far away from home so far? I mean, it's not that difficult. Like Izzy said, home's just a phone call away. But it definitely feels like home here. Like, I settled in pretty well. I'm rooming with Nate, so. That's good. And what it really, uh, I was committed to UNLV, and then Coach Royal got fired. And then I think it was that morning, Coach Diaz hit me up. And then lost the from there. So if, if Frank beat you in horse, would you still be a pit right now, or would you have been salty and went elsewhere? I'd still be here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you did your room, Nate. Who's taller? You were I think Nate's got me. Yeah, I think so. He's got like, I think an inch, two inches, maybe. Or not, it's just like, like centimeters. I don't know. We had offers from West Coast. How did your family take the news you were coming all the way to Pittsburgh? My mom was very happy. She grew up in New Jersey. Oh, okay. And yeah, she's she loves the East Coast, so she was very happy. When Coach Signetti came out, they clicked right away about talking about the East Coast. It was like, I think 20 minutes talking about the East Coast. My grandma was about five hours away, so it's not it's not too bad. Yeah. Anything final?